there has only been a handful of institutional analysts who has remained a Tesla bull during the chaotic last quarter. Canaccord Genuity's George Gianarikas is one of them, who's been saying that Tesla's self-driving will be the real catalyst for the stock. And now he's looking like he'll be right. Today, we're going to review some of his comments about the recent Tesla announcement. He explains which companies will likely emerge as the clear winners in RoboTaxi. He calls himself an autonomy Uber bull and says that vehicle autonomy will be one of the highest value creating technologies ever to, ever to be deployed. So today we've got CERN Basher with us. He's a chartered financial analyst. Thank you so much, uh, CERN. Hi, Herbert. It's good to be with you. Appreciate you joining me. So you and I are going to drop a very big video tomorrow. So folks, you need to be watching this. CERN has put together the just the most complete robotaxi implications to society, to Tesla, to businesses. It is full of data. Uh, so watch out for that video. It is uh, very, very good. And so today we're going to talk about George Gianarikas. He's a Canaccord analyst and... Um, you know what he what he's been quite bullish on Tesla for quite a while now. He and Kathy Wood from Ark Invest and others have been saying about robo taxis coming. Now, two three months ago, people would just kind of say that's way in the future, but now it's looking like they made the right call. So let's take a look at this. Um, you know, his buy rating is two hundred thirty four dollars, and he said this: as a father of a soon to be driving teenager, I wish we could fast forward to a time when no person drove and the roads were governed by robots. People are not good drivers. Sorry, humanity, I love you, but you need to let go of the wheel. 44,000 people died in the U.S. in 2023 in car accidents. 44,000 too many, and it's getting worse. People are running more red lights than ever. Road rage is on the rise. What will it take for many of us to stop resisting EVs and automobiles? autonomous vehicles and to cheer them on. So let's start with that. Um, you, you know, again, in that uh, presentation we'll do tomorrow, you have a lot of data on this. What's your thoughts on, you know, the importance of autonomous vehicles and why are some people, you know, fighting it? Obviously, you know, they're the industries that are dying. Tell me what your thoughts. Yeah, I think that change in general is hard. And I think it also may come from a lack of understanding in terms of what moving to an autonomous world really means. And so I, I don't fault anybody for having resistance. I think that's a natural human thing. It's probably a, a good survival instinct for us, right? You know, it's like, oh, here's a here's a blue plant. Let's try it, try try eating it and see what happens. It's like, well, no, maybe we should be careful about eating the blue plant. So you know, there's a good reason for it. Um, but that that said, I think we have to be sort of data driven. We have to look at the benefits, the costs over time, and we have to look at it at a societal level rather than just individually. Um, but yeah, change change is hard. I, I think in this first paragraph here, he hits on some very important and true points. People are not good drivers, right? We are distracted. We get sleepy. You know, we, we just don't always pay attention. And even if you are, there's somebody else out there that isn't. And the point that he's making here about people running red lights, I live in Florida, and I think that the orange light is a signal to people to accelerate. I, I've mm -hmm. never seen anything like it. It's it's actually quite scary. And I'm to the point now that when the light turns green, I'm looking both ways to make sure there's no other car coming through the intersection from the other, other direction. So, yeah, what he's saying here makes a lot of sense to me. Okay. Yeah. So it's not just obviously always bring it back to what's the impact society, why this is important. Here's mm -hmm. why, but let's talk about Tesla stock. And so he continues on saying for our part, we are autonomy Uber bulls and they have been uh, uh, Canaccord, uh, Dan Ives, uh, Kathy Wood, unabashed and unrelenting. So we believe autonomous vehicles are set to increase resource utilization improve productivity, save lives, and much more. We see vehicle autonomy as one of the highest value creating technologies to be deployed ever. And you've done a video in the past talking about mm -hmm. what would happen to Tesla cars that have uh, full self-driving, what would happen to their value, which is skyrocket. What would happen to, again, the show that we're gonna drop tomorrow, you've outlined the economics. Full autonomy not only has the potential to improve resource utilization, the key underlying tenet of sustainability, right? But to also enhance human productivity, decongest highways, downsize vehicle fleets, provide transport to billions of underserved 
and save lives. Big stuff. Any thoughts on that comment? Well, yeah, he's hitting on so many different different important points here. Um, increased resource utilization. People that own vehicles are not using them very much. If you owned an airplane and didn't use it much, then it's just a money pit. Mm -hmm. And basically that's what vehicles are as well. So there's a tremendous opportunity there to improve that. Improving productivity. If you don't have to spend time driving a vehicle, then you can do something else, right? And the something else may not be work. The something else might just be taking a nap and that's not terrible either, right? Saving lives. This is huge. And we talked about that earlier. So there's so many different benefits here. Um, and he's right about the autonomy being one of the greatest value creating technologies that we've ever seen. I've done some work on that. Many others have built models on this. Elon has talked about this. Brett, Brett Winton recently has said that it's, it's a 50 X improvement in terms of the profitability to the automaker. Um, it's, it's phenomenal. Uh, so that's objectively, I think, I think true. Um, decongesting highways. I mean, who, who likes traffic, right? So it's interesting for people that are, you know, a little bit hesitant about autonomous vehicles, would they vote for more traffic and more congestion? You know, I, I've never heard anybody say how great being stuck in traffic is. I only hear complaints. And so we now have an opportunity to to address to address that, and I think it's critical. Okay, and then let's move on to his talks about his 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 comments about Tesla and what their role will be in autonomy. So obviously they're the leaders. So Tesla is the leaders in autonomy, in our opinion, despite some extended deployment timetables. Right, this is him saying Elon's mm -hmm. keeper. Keep promising FSC's coming, FSC's coming. And now if sure feels like FSC's here and uh, they're gonna reveal their RoboTaxi unveil will happen on August 8th. So yes, they have taken a different controversial technology approach, <laughs> controversial to the rest of the industry, which is don't use LiDAR, use vision only cameras. Um, and then a year and a half ago, they switched from heuristics code to neural net. So I don't know if that's controversial. Uh, but we think the market has room for multiple solutions, okay? We cannot stand here and say definitively that Tesla's camera-only neural net approach is the technology winner long-term. Okay, that's fair. I mean, that's, that's uh, it's still to be decided, but I think everybody's realizing it is the right path or technology winner long-term. Uh, or that mobilized system, one that uses machine learning, large language model components, but is connected by traditional software code is a short technology bet or that Aurora's hybrid approach, similar to Mobilize, with heavy use of simulated miles is the one. Mm -hmm. So hard to tell, although Elon did just recently post saying that uh, he just, his post was basically saying that simulation is just not going to be able to do it. So you've got somebody who makes these comments and then years later, he's proven correct. <laughs> so some people still think that maybe simulation is enough to you know create a robotaxi. But what we can say, however, is that these three appear to be ahead of the pack and likely winners in their respective end markets, including others like Waymo. So they they still, you know, even though they're Tesla Uber bulls, they still are kind of leaving the door open for other players. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, a few. Um, you know, just on the simulated miles issue, um, I don't know how comfortable people would be in flying on an airplane with a pilot that said that he or she's only trained on simulators. <laughs> right. So clearly that, that, that's just an obvious one to me. You need real world experience. The simulator is great. The simulator is fantastic. Right. Um, but you need more than that. And Elon has said that. And I think all the companies in the robotic space are saying that as well. So if that's a company's approach, that's, that's going to be a tough, a tough road. Um, it can certainly accelerate things and that's great. It's, it's, you know, simulations are great. Um, mobilized approach to the extent they're using human coded software, I think clearly shows the, the, the issue with that in Tesla's experience. And one of the reasons why the FSD timeline has been pushed back is because Tesla kept writing more and more code. 
And it wasn't until they discovered a way to get rid of 300,000 lines of code and simplify the software and have it become, you know, neural network, did they discover a way that, to truly make this work. And that's the breakthrough, right? And so to the extent other companies are relying on humans to code and, and address all these edge cases, they're going to be at it for years and their software will never be, never be complete. So in my mind, those approaches are flawed. Um, now it can still be useful. I think we've already seen that with, with Waymo and, and so on, that, that those approaches can work with a lot of sensors, but they're in geofenced areas. That's not generalized to anywhere in the country. And I suppose they could operate a robot taxi network and, and garner some success, but it's not going to be something that can scale very easily. So. Mm -hmm. And this is a table that I've been showing in my last several shows because it's so powerful. Uh, but um, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the uh, analyst who presented this. <clears throat> I'm forgetting her name right now. Uh, so they uh, basically showed that you have this table here, right? Which of these autonomous vehicle co companies have decided to go camera only, vision only, versus which mm -hmm. ones are still using LiDAR, which ones are still using rule-based code, and which ones has gone to the end-to-end. -end. And you can see that almost all the other autonomous vehicle companies initially started with uh, LiDAR and HD mapping, and then Tesla's proven that you don't need all that. You can just go with a camera. So Mobileye has got a camera only. I think uh, Comma AI has it as well. And so that was one of his comments. But Tesla two years ago, a year and a half ago, moved to the end-to-end -end neural net, and they've shown that that's really working very well. And you've got a couple of the Chinese EV companies like Li Auto and uh, Xiaopang have stated that they need to start going to the end-to-end -end neural net as well. So they're starting to make those moves. But there's big, you know, it's not as easy for these companies. They need to do two big things, camera, uh, sort of hardware and software. And then the other big thing is the data that even if they get here, they don't have the fleet to create the data. And so this is the question of whether or not NVIDIA simulation, is that going to be enough? And the answer by most or some people are saying, no, that's not going to be, including Elon. So that's the big question. Um, but yeah, this is a very beautiful chart that uh, that I love. It's actually, I just remembered who it is. It's Altimeter Capital, mm -hmm. uh, who, who put this together. Yeah, I think her name might be Frida. Frida. So Frida? Frida. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I think that, that Tesla, though, is showing the way. So these other companies now have a pathway to follow and try to duplicate. And the question is then how long will it take them? Right. If, how long will it take them to gather the data and to develop what Tesla's developed? So this is uh, George Gianarikas again from Canaccord. He says, we currently see Tesla and Mobileye as winners in the passenger AV market. Being vertically integrated is crucial to constructing a well-functioning AV system. We think many independent OEM efforts will wind down over time for reasons including lack of scale, leaving room for Mobileye to gain traction as a merchant vendor to multiple OEMs. So who's going to partner with these? Uh, and um, yeah, it, it's, unlike, it's likely that many will partner with Tesla but those who don't want to do a Tesla, they'll pick another winner. Maybe it's Mobileye, maybe it's NVIDIA. Um, you know, NVIDIA is already partnered with a bunch of AV companies. And then um, we see Tesla's system as well-functioning and likely used exclusively for its own vehicle fleet for some time. Mm, I think there's going to be partnerships for sure. We see Aurora, I don't even know who they are. As do Oh, this is trucking. Yeah, they're the trucking semi company, autonomous semis, which are sufficient for the stock to reach our price target. Just wait until Tesla Semi uh, enters the room on that one. Um, so that'll be significant competition, I think, for Roar's suite. Um, but just in terms of, you know, the, the, the other OEMs, they have a decision to make. Mm -hmm. They can continue to go down the road and develop it themselves. Or they can rely on their partners, Mobileye, perhaps. Or they can look at what Tesla's doing and say, you know what? This is a fundamental change to our business model. And if we don't jump on this sooner rather than later, 
the ship may have left, left the harbor, right? The trains left the station, whatever analogy you want to use. It may be too little too late. We have shown that the profit potential in the business model of robo taxis and autonomous vehicles in general is so different than the auto business. And they're already struggling and already struggling with this EV transition. So the sooner that they become profitable in some way, shape or form, it helps them with the EV transition. If they're just gonna stick to their old model and make vehicles and try to make money and try to scale it, they're gonna go through that canyon of losses that Tesla went through, that Rivian now is going down and down further, you know, lower and lower, and there's no sign of a bottom yet. Are they willing to do that? We've, we've seen this year actually that many of them have pulled back, right? Ford is pulling back on their EV plans, GM and others. So they really should take a hard look at this and say, here's our opportunity. Partner with the industry leader, license the technology and make the choice to survive. Um, I don't think time is on their side. Right. So that I was just carrying that forward when you said that, right? So um, if if they partner today, if somebody announces that they're going to partner this, you know, next six months, it's going to take them three years, two to mm -hmm. two maximum or two yeah. most, most, most optimistic, two to three years, mm -hmm. even probably more to actually integrate the hardware, to integrate the software, to actually roll it out and make it happen. This is still much faster than if they don't do it. And then they need to, all those companies that we just walked through, they need to switch to a vision only. They need to switch to neural net. They need to have the, Tesla said, Elon said that they spent $10 billion this year on, <laughs> on this. And so they'd have to have the money. They'd have to set up the, you know, where, uh, data warehouses, those the learning, the training, chips and all that, uh, or partner with NVIDIA and others to make that happen. But it'll still take NVIDIA. They don't have access to the data yet. Two to three years. What happens in two to three years? You know, so it's almost like if there's a partnership with Tesla, stock will go up this year. Everybody's excited. That'd be great. If there's no partnership for Tesla this year, it just leaves the room wide open for them for three plus years before anybody can catch up. It's just going to be much longer than people realize. Yeah, the longer they wait, the worse their situation will be. And at some point it becomes too late. There, there is where, a where do you stand? I've, I asked this question on X. Is what's the probability that a, a third, another, another autom automaker is going to partner with Tesla for full self-driving this year? And uh, a couple of people said 0% chance. Where do you stand on this? Oh, I think it's higher than 0%. It's lower than 100. Mm -hmm. That's really helpful, right? Mm -hmm. um, Elon has tweeted recently, there mm -hmm. will be, he said there will be an OEM, you know, license agreement or whatever the words were. He, he used, mm -hmm. I believe he used the word will. Mm -hmm. So no doubt he's aware of whatever discussions are being had. I doubt that Elon would say that unless he was confident that somebody yes. was going to license it. That's not the way I interpreted his comment. He said, uh, we, and we will license this technology. Uh, that just, you know. So maybe more saying we're willing to license the technology. Well, yeah. So that and we will license it. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess back to your question, if, if that's the case, if there haven't been discussions, then I think the other OEMs are making a colossal mistake to not yeah. partner with the leader. What, why would you willingly go with second best that's so far away from where you are? Why, why would you make that decision to do that? Because you don't like Elon? Like th that seems like a silly yeah. way to run a company. It could be, right. the, you know, yeah, there, there's a, a fatal flaw in some people's arguments. Like they're going, you know, I, I, there's just like even George Genericus almost said this. I see this playing out just like Apple, right? Where there's an Apple and then there's an Android. And then we're going to see multiple players, multiple winners. The difference between the smartphone was Apple chose to be closed garden. They did not want to license. What happens yeah. if Apple chose to go license? Uh, there would still be Android, but it wouldn't be 85% of the market. It yeah. could be 50, 50, it could be, it could be flipped. Apple yeah. could have had 85% of market and then 15% chose to go within Android, you know? So yeah, we've seen that. We've seen that with Tesla and the other bot makers, the other bot makers have lined up with Nvidia and OpenAI, yeah. et cetera. And Tesla so far has not shown any indication or willingness to partner with any other bot makers, mm -hmm. but with FSD, they're sending a different signal, right? And maybe they will eventually too with, with the humanoid bots, but this is an opportunity. The door has been opened 
And if these OEMs don't choose to walk through that door, uh, I think they're making a colossal mistake. What's your thinking about the uh, the stock impact of the stock? So here if you got a bullish uh, George Generica's two hundred thirty five dollars stock is at what one seventy today. So that within a year, because of autonomy, he thinks it's going to go up to two thirty five, which is pretty pretty good. But it's not you know mind blowing. Then you've got uh, Kathy Wood who's who's sticking by their gun, saying that in three years, three years, twenty twenty seven. The stock will go to two thousand dollars, which is a uh, two a ten x to where it is where it's right now, a little bit more than ten x, uh, three years. What's your thinking? What will happen to the stock? Uh, let's say by next year, and then what will happen in three years? Yeah, um, I think I said recently on on one of your shows that that pontificating about the stock over the short term is a pretty pointless exercise. True. Right. Everybody likes to do it. Everybody wants to know where the stock's going to be in three or six months, right? And I'd love to know too. But the reality is no one knows. And anybody mm -hmm. that says they do is, is full of it. They, they're just mm -hmm. making stuff up. Mm -hmm. So I want to be honest about that. I don't know. What I'm focused on is where the company will be fundamentally over time. Mm -hmm. And the stock price will take care of itself whenever the appropriate time is. And I don't think anybody can predict that. It is possible that the stock rallies significantly on the understanding and the hope of what Robotaxi will do for the business model. And it is pretty clear how it will change the business model over time. But yet we also have a significant number of people that only care about the next quarter or the next year's earnings. And clearly this is not going to be reflected in the next quarter or the next year. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. So how that all plays out in the wash and add in the add in what the fed's going to do with interest rates and add in the economy and add in geopolitical forces who knows um to a fault i'm very focused on the long term and i'm not really worried about the short term i think as an investor if you're worried about the short term you're not investing you're speculating mm -hmm. and i want to be less of a speculator and more of an investor and the way i think about it is if this was a private company would I want to buy it today and hold it for the next 20 years? That, that's the way I approach this problem. I really don't care what people think about the stock and where it's going to go in the next six months, right? Because I, I want to own businesses that I can be comfortable owning for a long period of time and have them work for me and grow over time. So I, I just have a very different approach to all that. I, I, I don't really even think about where the stock is going to be in the next year. I'd love for it to be higher, but I'm not counting on that. Yeah. And I don't put any strategies in place to benefit from any short-term price movements. Right. So mm -hmm. sorry not to directly answer your question, but no, I, I don't okay. think anybody knows. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, that's perfect. I mean, the thing about you and um, uh, people need to follow you is because you do deep dive financial modeling. You've got 50 page slide decks, uh, that you've prepared for all sorts of different uh, businesses. You've done one for Humanoid, you've done one for Robotaxi. In fact, I'll remind people again that tomorrow we're gonna be dropping an amazing video with your whole you know, analysis on Robotaxi implications, first order, second order, third order implications to the business, Tesla, to other companies, to society, to airlines, hotels, and others. You did a fantastic job. And then you've done other business models where you've got spreadsheets and you've really thought through the different assumptions and then you've laid it out <laughs> and let people see your spreadsheets and people can change numbers if they wish because you said you know there's you always come up with you know conservative realistic optimistic and let people kind of play around with what they think and um, you put the model and let others put in their numbers uh, so you've done a great job that way so you know this this whole thing about autonomy it's becoming real and so there is the FSD impact. There's the you know people who own FSD, and then there's the impact to uh, Robotaxi. And how will this impact Tesla stock? And again, you've done the deep dive for the future of what it could look like for the business. So thank you so much, CERN. That was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And I would just add that I would rather be approximately right. Yeah. <laughs> about yeah. something that is massive in the long term. Yeah than precisely wrong about something in the short term. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> or even and, precisely and think, right about something in the short term. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. The, the guess. upside is limited in the short term. The stock's mm -hmm. not going to 10x or 100x in the short term, right? It's just, it's just not going to do that. Yeah. It might it might double, 
but it's not going to have that kind of appreciation. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it, I think we're so short term focused because the future is unpredictable and we, we want to know what it looks like. The reality is no one knows. We want to have some comfort that this great transition, this, this difficulty, the company is going through is going to yield some amazing results. Yeah. And I think the advantage that individual investors have, and I'm assuming mm -hmm. that most of the viewers on this channel are individual yeah. investors. Yeah. You do not have to pay attention to what anybody on wall street says. They are mm -hmm. playing a different game than you, right? They have to produce quarterly results. They have to produce calendar returns that beat some kind of benchmark. That is not the game that you have to play. When, when you and your spouse look at your retirement investments years from now, you're not going to say, but how do we do against the S&P 500? <laughs> that, that is not something that anybody ever says, right? And so you don't have to fall into the short-term trap of did they meet expectations for quarterly deliveries when the prize is something totally different a few years out of a completely different company, a completely different business model. I, I couldn't care less really about quarterly deliveries and earnings, right? Now I want to make sure the company is on track. I don't, I want to make sure the company, you know, is not going bankrupt, right? So I do care to some degree, but the trend and all that to me is secondary to what, the, where the company is headed longer term. What just happened a couple of days ago? Cause uh, again, on this show, we've done this, uh, you've had that uh, slide show. So we've showed where you said that Tesla is going to become a robotics AI company a robo taxi and the bot business dwarfs the auto business that as the years go on the auto business becomes like a little footnote uh to what tesla is known for and what tesla's major revenue and profits all going to come from this but uh didn't elon also post something and you said that's what i've been saying <laughs> yeah i, I kind of teased him i I wanted to make sure he knew it was a joke that I wasn't being too serious, but that's what I've been saying, Elon, all, all this time. And, and I know yeah, he yeah. has too, so it's not like he I came too. up with anything. And, yeah. But you, you know, obviously people, but the thing is you've put out the models and you can actually visually see it. You can actually see the numbers of what would happen. It will dwarf automotive. And so it's funny that we're all worried about, you know, it's fair. It's fair. It's 90 plus percent of the revenue today's auto. So people are like, oh my God, you know, production delivery. But if this works, and not all of it has to work, just one of them, robot, yeah. energy, uh, yeah. robotaxi, you know, AI, if any of those four work, the auto is a footnote. Yeah. So. And for most of Wall Street to own a stock today, they need the company to be working now. They need Which the quarterly earnings. Yeah. Yeah, right? They need auto. And auto is going through a tough cycle. It's a cyclical industry. The whole global auto industry is struggling. Plus, you've got this transition of ICE to EV on top of that. It's a very challenging time for all automakers. Again, investors, your time horizon is different. You don't have to play this game. You're not playing the same game as Wall Street, right? Listen to them, learn from them, but but don't fret that it didn't meet expectations. Like, who cares? Yeah. Right? That is not what you need to focus on. Not, not investment advice, you can purchase any way you want, but I'm just saying as an individual retail investor, you can play a different game than Wall Street. Well, what I find about Wall Street is they do a lot of research. And if you separate out the research from their price target, it's pretty valuable. So if you mm -hmm. look at what ARK Invest does with their research, if you look at what Dan Ives or even Morgan Stanley or even this, these, these folks, they will tell you that some of them, not all of them, most of them don't even do any research and they're just truly, they don't really follow Tesla, but they, they, you know, they're just telling you what they think it is and they don't know anything, but some of them really do. The problem is not the problem, but many of these guys will do the research, but then they cannot change their price target because they are playing that game where they need to be mm -hmm. within the quarter, within the year. Uh, but the research, you know, they, 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 you can see Morgan Stanley that they, the kind of statements they make about what they think Tesla is going to become in AI and all these things. That's valuable um, mm -hmm. to, to go. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, CERN. I appreciate you. Follow him on X at CERN Basher. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye. Thanks, Robert. I've created a website that is the most comprehensive resource for the Tesla investor. Please check it out. Simply go to my website at herbertong.com.